Hi everybody. Okay, so the title of this is How to Make a Traditional Bow. I hope I get through it, but you never know. Corbin has a cold and he might just start whining. So this was, I wanted to get a um, example of the kind of bow I wanna show you guys how to make. This is not perfect. It definitely was some of my practice runs when I was working on these. Um, but this is like the style I'm going for to teach you guys tonight. So um, what you're gonna need is ribbon. I found that the one and a half inch ribbon works best for practicing and um, just learning how to make the bows. It's not so big that you can't hold it in your hands, but it's not so small that it's hard to hold on to. Um, you're also going to want a ribbon that has a wire in it. And usually when you buy the ribbon along the outside, it will say wire rib or like something wire ribbon. So um, you're also gonna want some floral wire or I got this at Hobby Lobby, I believe. Um, I like this one because I don't need any cutter. It just has a cut. Um, you're able to cut it off right there. You pinch this and it just pops right off. So this doesn't need to be this long. I'm sure you can't even see it with my green. Um, I would say you probably need it to be about four inches long. Um, so I'm gonna set that down. And where you wanna start on your bow really depends on how long you want your tails to be. So um, for this one, I'm just gonna want my tails maybe like five inches. So what's really important is how you start your bow and how you hold it. Otherwise it will fall apart when you're making it, which is something that I've struggled with a lot when I was first making these. Um, so for this, when you first do your first loop, it's gonna be this middle bow or middle one right here. So I know that this was my first loop. So however big you want your loops, that's kind of how you wanna do it. Um, this one's gonna be right in the middle, so I don't wanna make it super huge. I wanna make it kind of small. So what you're gonna wanna do is fold your ribbon like this and then twist it. Um, so you at least have two twists in and then you wanna open it up and then pinch it so that you have a twist, like you wanna make sure that it's overlapping each other. So you wanna hold it with your thumb and your finger on the top and the bottom. And I like to hold mine like this because with my hand on the outside because actually I'm sorry I'm lying to you already um yeah with my hand on the outside but I like my bow going to the left side of me or my tail I'm sorry and then this is still attached to the ribbon so this is my middle and this is twisted so what you want to do is make another loop about the same size pinch it down here and twist it then turn do it again pinch it down here and twist it and make sure you're always having the twist underneath your finger so see how that's coming already um the trick is a lot of the times you're gonna wanna start to make the bow, like, oh, I wanna put one here and here and here. The trick is to only keep it in a line. So like with this bow, this loop is a lot bigger than this loop. So what you wanna kinda do, if that's the look you're going for, if the bottom out, like the bottom of your bow, <laughs> sorry if this is making no sense at all, but I hope when I do it and you see the end that it will make sense. So this is what we have so far. Remember, you wanna keep going in a line. So this is my first, second. Now I wanna make this one just a tiny bit higher than my second one. Hey, Amanda. Um, I buy my ribbons at Hobby Lobby when they are 50% off. Otherwise you can spend a lot of money on ribbons. Um, so this one's just a little bit higher than this one's a little bit higher than my middle one. I twisted it on the bottom. Now this one's gonna be a little bit higher. Pinch it down here, twist it. And now what I like to do is do at least four on each side. 
So by the time I get to my third one on this side, I don't like to make it any higher because then it just gets kind of out of control. So see how I'm still keeping it in a straight line like this? And I just keep going, keeping them about the same height. Sorry, this is so hard to keep it on my... Ah, almost dropped it. Okay, so now I have three on each side. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I'm still twisting on the bottom. And now my fourth one, I really don't like to get these any longer because then they just kind of get out of control. So now here's four and you can do as many as you want, honestly. It just gets kind of crazy. Okay, so I have these pinched. It's all in a line. It's starting to get a little bit loopy. I'm gonna take my, what's it called? Floral wire. <laughs> Guys, I don't know all the terms for this stuff. I start, uh, you know, you put it in the middle where your fingers are. You want this to be where your fingers are. Pinch it down here, and then you wanna twist it. Try to twist the bow and not your hand because then it gets, makes it tighter. Okay, so now we're gonna end up with something like this, right? It's flat. Ooh, let me try to show you here. And it's already starting to want to do its own thing. So it's smaller and it's getting bigger as you go out to a certain extent. Then I'm gonna cut my ribbon down here. So now we just have our standalone bow. Now I'm gonna pinch right here in the middle again, where I had in the beginning. And then I'm gonna take my outside ribbon or bows and start moving them like I had wanted to when I was first making it. So you just start moving them around. And sometimes if your last bow is a little too long, you can pull, pull your tails. Um, so honestly, this last part is really just trying to get the bow fluffed and ready to go. See, I have one right here that is just really long. That's kind of sticking out there. I can either make it fatter, try to hide it behind some other ones. So you can really just mess around with it for a while until you get it to look the way you want it to. If you see any holes, just move around your bow a little bit or your loops. And honestly, I could probably mess with this forever because I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to these things. And you can always start over and do it again, especially with these wire bows, but I would not suggest doing it without a wire bow until you get really good at it. And even then, if you don't have wire, your bow is not gonna be as fluffy as this. So, and then when you get to the end, you get to figure out what you wanna do with your tails. A lot of the times I like to pinch it in half and cut it at a 45 degree angle so you get your little, what do they call it, a dovetail? So, it's definitely not perfect because I could mess with it forever, but that is a more traditional bow. Let me know if you guys tried it, if it worked. Um, let me know if it was helpful and I will come back. I'm not sure when, but I will teach you guys how to do a different kind of bow. Thank you, everybody.